Right now, it's the best of Groucho. From coast to coast, in every state in the Union, the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Say, that's me! Well, here I am again with $3,000 for one of our couples tonight. And if anybody says the secret word... <laughs> Here he is, the secret word bird. We'll come down and pay him $100 in cash. The word tonight is nose. Okay, duck. Scram. <laughs> All right, George, who's placed to try for the $3,000? Well, Groucho, we asked if there were any engaged couples present tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Sylvia Morrison and Mr. Robert Carmen. And here they are. Folks, come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, well, welcome. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll get $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. You two plan on getting married, eh? Well, I'm happy to hear it. Miss, uh, Miss Sylvia Morrison, are you going to be the bride, I presume? Yes. That's a good idea. Where, where are you from, uh, Sylvia? Detroit. Detroit? Uh... Highland Park. Highland Park. Mm -hmm. I used to do the Highland Fling. I never did the Highland Park. <laughs> where are you from, uh, Bob? I'm from Nemaha, Nebraska. Nemaha? Nemaha. What, is that an Indian town or...? Uh... Well, it's down on the river. It's Indian, yes. Yeah, well, I'm down on that river, too. I've been drowned there once. <laughs> now, uh, how old are you, Sylvia? 25. You're 25? And how old are you, Bob? I'm 25. Well, those, those are nice ages. I hope you two will be happy the rest of your lives. Thank you. Now, wasn't that a warm thing to say? <laughs> what could I say? No, me, I mean. <laughs> oh. You know, the warmth from this program is heating up homes all over America. <laughs> Where do you work, Bob? I work for Southern County's Gas Company. Oh, I see. What, what do you do there? Eh? Well, I'm a, a bar tester. A bartender? No, a bar tester. <laughs> I didn't know they boozed it up down there. <laughs> what, what's a bar tester? Well, I test bar holes. <laughs> now you're talking, huh? <laughs> Now then, what is a bar hole? Well, you, uh, you poke a hole in the ground with a long poke rod. Poke a hole? That's in uh, Idaho, isn't it? <laughs> you... I used to send mail there to poke a hole Idaho. <laughs> now, what is a poke a hole? Well, you poke a hole in the ground with this long I rod. I was in a hole once in a poker game, but... It... <laughs> well, and then you sniff it. You say you sniff it? Well, yeah. What are you, a groundhog? <laughs> no. You, you have a little machine that you uh, measure how explosive it is. I see. And that's, that's all? You take the bar hole and you go to Idaho and, and sniff it, is that it? <laughs> Sounds like a very interesting job. Uh, where do you work, uh, Sylvia? Southern County's Gas Company. <laughs> are you a sniffer, too? <laughs> No, no, I don't belong in that category. Oh. Well, you both work at the gas company, eh? Uh -huh. This marriage is apt to blow up any minute. <laughs> what, do you, uh, what do you do for the gas company uh, outside of uh, adorning it? Well, I work in the collection department. I try to collect the money for the gas company. You sit there in the gas company and try to collect money? That's right. Now, you ask me what I do for the gas company. What do you do for the gas company? I pay one of the biggest bills in Southern California. <laughs> and that includes Idaho, too. I mean, poke a hole, Idaho. You, uh, do you contemplate uh, continuing working after you're married, uh, Sylvia? Oh, yes, for a little while. How long? About 10 minutes? Huh? <laughs> Longer than that. Why are you going to keep working? Don't you want to build a little uh, love nest for uh, Bob here? Well, we... Need a lot of little things around the house. <laughs> you 
Isn't this a little early to be planning on a large family? <laughs> Bob, were, were you aware of this? Well, she means things like stoves and refrigerators and yes. furniture and things. She means what? Well, refrigerator and a stove and furniture and things like that. Well, that's what you think she means, Dad. Dad. <laughs> I know who's going to be the boss in this family, the manager of the gas company. <laughs> I think you're a wonderful couple, and I think you're going to be very happy, and you'll have a lot of little ice boxes and stoves. <laughs> <laughs> now, here we go. In just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $3,000 question. Right now, I want you to pay close attention to some important information. Let's see if you'll get the chance at the $3,000 question. Fenneman, explain the rules. You bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $3,000 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected war songs. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? $10. $10. During what war was the song Dixie first popular? During the Civil War. That's right, during the Civil War. Well, your kids are off to a good start. You have thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for three thousand dollars tonight. How much of your? Uh, how much are they? Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. How much are you going to bet this time? Twenty-nine. Mm-hmm. Twenty-nine dollars. Okay. During what war was the song "Hinky Dinky Polly Boo" first popular? First World War. First World War. That's right. First World War. Well, you're really climbing now. You have fifty-nine dollars. Here's your third question. You have uh, how much? $59. $59. How much are you betting? Well, we'll bet 58 of it. 58. During what war was the song Yankee Doodle first popular? During the American Revolution. That's right, the Revolutionary War. You now have $117. 117 and how much of that are you going to visit? Uh, are you going to risk? Oh, golly. <laughs> is this our third question or fourth? This is the last. No, this is the, the coup de grace. This is the last one? We'll bet it all. You're going to bet it all. Huh? Bet it all. Do you approve of this brand of recklessness, Sylvia? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> After thought. How insincere can you be, eh? <laughs> During what war was the song Goodbye Broadway first popular? First World War. I think so. First World War. First World War is right. Thank you, Doctor. All right, kids, we'll see you later. And you wind up with a grand total of $234 from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Uh, Groucho, the secret word is still the same. It's nose. Say it over again. Uh, we invited some stamp authorities and some um, letter carriers to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Alice Bacchus and Mr. Irving Padwall. And here they are. Folks, come in here and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life, kids. <laughs> you say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss Alice uh, Bacchus, huh? Yes. Bacchus. Uh, Bacchus is willing, Bacchus. yeah? <laughs> Bac Bacchus. Bacchus. I presume you're the stamp collector, huh? Yes. And uh, Irving uh, Padwell. Uh, Padwell, is that the way That's it is? right, yeah. Well, what is your postmark, uh, Irving? Minneapolis, Minnesota. How long have you been playing post office, uh, uh, Irving? I've been a postman for 10 years, but it's not exactly play. Well, when I play post office, it isn't exactly play either. <laughs> When I play, I'm playing for keeps. <laughs> but I've been losing pretty steadily lately. <laughs> what do you carry your letters in? In the satchel, in my satchel. In your satchel. Uh, couldn't you say you carry them in a pouch so I could tell you a joke about a kangaroo? <laughs> we don't call them pouches. You don't call them pouches? That's all right. I don't have a joke mm. about a kangaroo. Anymore. <laughs> By the way, how, how heavy is your average load? Oh, I'd say about 25 pounds. Is that so? I'd last about five minutes. Yeah. I get tired just tying my shoelaces. <laughs> Although once I carried a mortgage for ten years. <laughs> are, you, are you interested in hearing a joke about a kangaroo? No, I don't think so. 
apparently he's heard this joke. <laughs> now, do housewives ever invite you in for a cup of coffee? Well, I'll tell you, I never like to stick my nose in other people's homes. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> you said the secret word, so you split $100. Here's 50 for you, and here's 50 for you. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, where were we? You, you, I asked you if uh, people asked you in for coffee, and you says you don't stick your nose in the coffee. Is that right? No, we, we don't stick our nose in people's affairs. On they, they stop us. They asked us many times. Can we, we, we are not allowed to do that. I see. Now, as we were saying, you're a stamp collector. Is that right, uh, Alice? Um, yes. That's a pretty uh, name, Alice, isn't although it? Although I'm more of a philatelist. You more of a what? Of a philatelist. Well, I am, too. I always say if anything's going to happen, it's going to happen. <laughs> There's no use worrying about it. <laughs> what is a philatelist? <laughs> well, it's, um, it stems from a Greek word meaning um, lover of taxes. Lover of taxes? <laughs> there isn't a philatelist in the house. <laughs> What's the rarest stamp that you know of? Well, the very rarest one is the British Guiana. It's worth about $50,000. It was uh, put out in 1856. Mm -hmm. It's worth $50,000? $50,000. When did you say it was issued? 1856. And today they're worth $50,000 a piece? Mm -hmm. If I'd only known. <laughs> I bought a dollar's worth of those when they first came out. <laughs> like a fool, I wasted them all writing mash notes to Dolly Madison. <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you two. Now, you both have my stamp of approval. Are you sure you wouldn't like to hear a joke about a kangaroo in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other two couples, you'll get a chance at the $3,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. The engaged couple won $234. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you 20 bucks. You selected words beginning with man. All right, you, here's your first question. You have $20 now. You selected words beginning with man. How much of the 20 are you going to bet? 10. 10? 10. 10. OK. What word beginning with man means a guitar-like musical instrument? Mandolin. Mandolin is right. You're off to a good start. You have $30. Remember, you're going for $3,000 tonight. How much of the 30 will you risk now? Okay. Talk it up, 25, kids. 25. 25. 25. 25? Yeah, All right. What word beginning with man means an opening in the streets? Manhole. <laughs> you now have $55. Oh. OK. Well, how much are you going to bet? Well, we'll bet uh, 50. Okay, what word beginning with man means a large and pretentious house? Mansion. Mansion is right. <laughs> now you climb to $105. $105 is your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the 105? You bet it all? Why not? <laughs> bet it all. Okay, here we go. What word beginning with man means the shelf above the fireplace? Mantle. Mantle is right. <laughs> Okay, and you wind up with two hundred and ten dollars from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Thank you very much. We'll see you later, kids. Uh, Groucho. Yes. The uh, secret word is still the same. It's nose. Nose. Uh, just before we went on the air, we selected a housewife from our studio audience, Mrs. Audrey Cooper. Her partner is a special guest, Senator Dudley LeBlanc. And here they come, folks. Come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Uh, Audrey Cooper, you're the housewife, eh? Yes, uh, I'm... Where, where are you from? I'm from Chicago. You, you're married, huh? Yes. Uh, what's, uh, uh, what sort of work does your husband do, Audrey? Well, he's a GI. He's going to school under the GI Bill. Oh. Senator Dudley LeBlanc. Fifth grade. Where, where are you from, uh, Dudley? I'm from uh, Abbeville, Louisiana. Oh. That's a parish down in the... Almost. It covers almost the whole parish. Uh-huh. Are, are you married? Uh, oh, yes. Any little politicians at home with loose planks in their platforms? Well, that's it. 
You have six little politicians? That's right. Are you sure of that? Positive. You demanded a recount, eh? <laughs> How did you meet your husband, uh, Mrs. Cooper? Oh, I met him in San Diego. He was in the Navy. I no, I didn't mean where. Guard. I meant uh, how. How? Well, I was working as a waitress on Liberty Nights, oh. trying to pay for a fur coat. And was the coat in the restaurant? No. You're confusing me. <laughs> <laughs> how can you say that? I was, <laughs> I was selling spaghetti. You were selling what? spaghetti in a fur coat? <laughs> in the restaurant. Well, uh, did you have that kind of a job in the service that you could quit and serve spaghetti, too? Oh, I only did that in the evenings. Oh. I was on duty all day, and at night I would serve spaghetti. This is a kind of a cock and bull story, isn't it, Senator? <laughs> yeah, you exactly. don't believe a word of this, do you? Oh, I believe the little lady, yes, sir. You do, huh? <laughs> <laughs> See how easily the southern chivalry emits itself? <laughs> Remember, you're a married man, Senator. Take it easy there. Right, but my wife is not here. <laughs> Her husband is still down there fattening up on that spaghetti, so you're pretty safe. That's right. How long have you been a senator? Uh, ten years. Well, why, what are you doing here? Why aren't you in Washington? I never go to Washington. You're a senator, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mr. Marks, I... Well, how come you don't spend any time in Washington? Because I'm a state senator from Louisiana. How did you ever get started in politics, Senator? Uh, did you have a bunch of guitar players and hula dancers along, like Papi O'Donnell passed the biscuits? Or? No, I didn't believe in that kind of stuff. I hired a big jazz band, and I went out... Uh, <laughs> and I made 112 speeches, and only two of them in English. You made 112 speeches and only two of them were in English? That's right. No wonder you were elected. Nobody knew what you were talking about. <laughs> well, if you didn't speak English, uh, what language were you uh, declaiming in? Well, you know, in South Louisiana, we have probably a half a million people who speak French, and I'll say, uh, conservatively speaking, over 100,000 don't even understand English. It's like uh, Quebec, huh? Oh, or Montreal. I see. Huh? Well, could you give us a... Sample of a campaign speech in French? I speak it very well, you know. Yeah. Il y avait un petit jeune homme, une fois, il est venu auprès d'un barbershop et il voulait se faire raser. Il a attaché son mulin et il a rentré quand le barbier a commencé à y passer de la savon sur la figure. Il dit, si tu veux, il dit, je vais te barguiner mon mulin pour ton rasoir. Le barbier dit, mais comment ça peut se faire? Mais il dit, ton rasoir a le plus fort que mon mulin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mighty fine speech, Senator. I understood every word. Did you really promise the vote is all that? Oh, no, but listen, this was a French joke. This is not a speech. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a very funny joke. <laughs> now, what was it in English? Well, it was a young man uh, who came to a country lad, came to the town one day, and he hitched his mule in front of the barber shop, and he went in and wanted to shave. So after the barber lathered his face, he, he told the barber he started, barber started shaving. He says, wait a minute, he says to the barber. He says, if you want to, he says, I'll trade you my mule for your razor. The barber says, how can you give me this mule for this rough to razor? So the young man says, well, your razor pulls more than my mule. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, on jokes like that, you got elected? Oh, you can bet your life. You know any jokes about a kangaroo? No, I don't know any jokes about a kangaroo. Don't you even know the old one about the mother kangaroo who spanked her little boy for eating crackers in bed? No, I don't know that. Wait till the postman finds out what he missed, eh? You'll be tickled to death, eh? Now, Audrey, uh, you've been listening to the senator here. Do you think you'd vote for him? Oh, yes, I, I think I would. Would you accept this woman's vote? Oh, I'd be tickled to death. <laughs> that's a Louisiana senator for you. You'd take anybody's vote, even a vote that's cast in California. <laughs> Gertrude, do you know who your state senator is? Oh, no. I'm, 
I don't know. <laughs> Senator, what do you I'm think of a, of a voter who doesn't know who a senator is? Well, it's not necessarily her fault. There must be something wrong with him because everybody in Louisiana knows who I am. <laughs> Well, Senator, do you have any particular political philosophy? Uh... Well, I, uh, as such, I advocate the cause of the oppressed, the downtrodden, the farmers, and the, and the working man, the Democrats, and the Republicans, and so forth. <laughs> well, uh, do, you, do you believe in soaking the rich? Yes, uh, you know, uh, I've always been a poor boy myself, <laughs> and... Uh, I've always advocated the idea of helping the poor and soaking the rich and make those able to pay, pay the taxes. Well, do you still believe in that? Oh, I tell you. <laughs> do you I, still believe in that, Senator? Oh, I tell you, not so much now. <laughs> well, uh, what caused this uh, sudden change in your political philosophy? Uh? Well, you know, last year I made $5 million. <laughs> How did you manage to make $5 million in one year, Senator? Well, you know, I own the LeBlanc Corporation, the maker that makes Hattacol. We manufacture Hattacol. Hattacol? What's that good for? Well, it was good for $5 million for me last year. <laughs> and that's good enough for me. Well, I've learned a lot about Louisiana politics tonight. Now, let's see if you two can earn the chance at the $3,000. By the way, Senator, what are you going to do with uh, this money if you should happen to win it? You can't keep it anyway. Do you have a special place for it? Yeah, if I should win this money tonight, I want you to know that uh, I'm going to double what I win and give it to Irene Dunn's St. John Hospital Gill. Well, that's a wonderful thing. Sir. With that kind of an objective, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of people rooting for you out here. The engaged couple is still leading with $234. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected initials of railroads. That's now, you've right. done a lot of traveling. You ought to be pretty good at this. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to go for? Now, you and Gertrude, talk it over, Senator. Now, We've we don't decided, want... I believe, to 10, huh? Oh. Just 10. Oh. The first question. All right. What railroad is identified by the initials UP? Union, Union Pacific. Union Pacific is right. <laughs> and you're off to a good start. You have $30. Remember, you're going for $3,000 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to bet? What do you say? 25. No, but 20. It'll keep us 10. I'd be willing to gab it at all, yeah. Well, not all of it. For no. a guy that's loaded, he says he can save it. <laughs> all right, what railroad is identified, Tony? What railroad is identified by the initials AT and SF? Atchison, Atchison, Atchison Topeka, and Santa Fe. Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. <laughs> Now you have $50. Woo -hoo. Oh, yeah, just in Topeka, Randa, Santa Fe. Woo -hoo. Here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? Bet it all this time. We're going to shoot. We better say five. 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 All right, 45. you're betting $45. What railroad is identified by the initials NYC? New York. New York Central is right. Now your fines are $95. $95 is your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 95 you wouldn't tell me what the other couple made. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we can't disclose that. It wouldn't be fair to them. What about $90? All right, we'll see. Okay, you're going to shoot the 90, eh? What railroad is identified by the initials B and O? Baltimore, Baltimore and Ohio. Baltimore and Ohio. <laughs> and you wind up with $185, and that means the engaged couple with $234 Get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. Well, you can give me your 90, Senator. Okay. <laughs> See you a little later. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. It's a great pleasure to appear here. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Gertrude. Audrey. <laughs> All right, well, in just one minute, I'll ask them the question. But first, here's something of interest to everyone. And here comes the engaged couple, our winning couple, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question, Groucho. Right. Well, here you are, you beautiful children. Here's your chance to get a nice box, nice. refrigerator, and all the things you were discussing before. Here we go for $3,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. So think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. We all know that Napoleon was defeated at Waterloo. For $3,000, tell me, in what country is Waterloo? Talk it over. Take your 15 seconds. Thank you. 
Who was that? Who was, who was his wife? Was his girlfriend? Josephine, where was she from? All right, kids, what's the answer you two have decided upon? France? No, I, I'm sorry, it's Belgium, it's near Brussels. That's, that's, I'm terribly sorry. I'd like to say you kids got off to a big stop, but of course we can't do anything about that. So that means the big question next week will be worth $3,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won how much? $234 in the quiz. And the secret word? No, no secret just word for this Well, that's not a bad beginning in that stag. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show. Remember that the dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends? Go in to see a DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Don't miss You Bet Your Life on radio every Wednesday night.